Councilmember Von Rudenberg. <clears throat> Deputy Mayor Catalino. Here. Deputy Mayor Sims. Here. Councilmember Battaglia. Here. Mayor LaBrosse. Here. This meeting is being held in accordance with the Open Public Meeting Act and JSA 10 colon 4 6 at sec. Notice having been published according to law with a copy on file in the city clerk's office and a copy posted on the bulletin board in City Hall. Would everybody please rise for the flag salute? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Okay, and with that we go right to uh, our agenda through the city manager. Good evening, Mayor and Council and invited guest. Um, this is the Committee of the Whole agenda for September 25th, 2018. First on the agenda is the discussion of island development, which is the Hudson Street, Essex Street, Sensaria Island that has just been created with the change of the first phase of the two-way conversion of Main Street. And before your packet, you have some diagrams and also a uh, artist rendering of this island. This island would be basically constructed and maintained by the Sensari family um, free of charge to the city. And it meets the height requirement of 10 feet and also meets um, that there's no view obstruction for traffic. So um, it's been designed by an engineer with all of those um, pieces involved in it to make sure that it serves the community and also continues to uh, beautify the city of Hackensack and mainly the main street in front of the courthouse. Okay. Anybody, the mayor or council, have any questions? No, it looks good. And I think the key point is what you said, that there's no visual obstruction, especially during maintenance. I mean, if there's going to be any bushes or trees or anything growing there, you have to make sure that when they maintain it, they also make sure that there's no uh, vehicular view and well, this, obstruction. <clears throat> this is a perfect accent. As m many people know, years ago, uh, there was an old bank on the corner there, mm -hmm. Mr. Sanzari. Uh, took down and in honor of his parents built a beautiful park um, and this island would be a perfect accent for that park so I think it's a great idea okay uh, number two on the agenda is a, an opposing proposed rate increase by Suez water um, basically Bergen County communities are uniting to um, prepare opposing um, resolutions for um, not adopting a rate increase. Uh, one family home would increase by $7.12 or 80%, and the monthly consumption rate for a one family with a 5 eighths meter will increase by 8.5 per CCF. So um, they're looking for an increase, obviously, the municipalities and the ratepayers are looking to avoid this increase, and uh, hopefully these resolutions will bring enough um, pressure on Suez to rethink how badly they really need that increase. Uh, any questions? No, but for the record, please note that uh, Councilwoman Von Rundeberg has arrived. Good evening. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, number three is the HUMC Cancer Partnership Resolution. This resolution um, is a partnership to educate the public where it says um, Hackens Hackensack University Medical Center and the Hackensack Health Department have advised that they wish to partner together to offer cancer prevention and control programs and the services to the community. Uh, the community, this program will be offered at no cost to the city and provide appropriate locations for the community to have access to these programs. So obviously, once again, the, um, the community, residents, and the public at large with the cooperation of the hospital and our health department is gonna try to find a way to reduce or rid cancer. And I applaud theirs because I don't virtually know anybody in this world that hasn't had somebody in her family 
that hasn't had cancer or, or is having that fight as we speak. Uh, number five, a resolution of Hackensack Fire Department for an AFG grant. This grant, um, oh, strike that, I jumped, didn't I? Yeah, you skipped it. Skipped it. Back to, sorry, number four, Child Health Care Shared Services Agreement with Woodridge. Um, this is a shared services between the city of, um, I guess it's the township of Borough. Woodridge? Borough. Borough, Borough. sorry. Um, which basically will provide that the city of Hackensack between uh, a shared services agreement in the city of Hackensack and the borough of Woodridge will run through December 31st, 2018, which Woodridge would, will pay Hackensack a flat fee for $1,000 to provide services encompassed by this resolution. Uh, this resolution is for child health conference in compliance with public health practices and standards and performance of local boards of health. So it's a mini shared services with us partnering with Woodridge Borough. Uh, number five. If I may said before, moving on, I had asked the city attorney to just look that over because there was some language in there uh, that you're talking about indemnifying them, et cetera. Just to, and you were going to check with uh, John yeah. Mark Cowell to just make sure that yeah, I mean, uh, there's no yeah, hardship uh, to us. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, this this is a. Um, is it a short-term shared service? I believe there's a regulation that each municipality has to provide, you know, like wellness um, assistance to uh, young children. You know, Woodridge, um, small community. I'm, I'm assuming they, they had some sort of vacancy or some inability to perform the, the service themselves. Um, so our personnel will do it. I mean, they are trained to do it. And so, yes, um, you know, we would be accepting if for some, whatever reason there would be some sort of... Um, um, you know, concern uh, about um, some sort of issue to arise that resulted, um, you know, if we made a mistake, you know, we could get sued and, and we would agree to accept that responsibility. Um, you know, I, I think that's highly unlikely that there would be uh, an issue. I mean, these are very common things. I'm sure there are a lot of statutory um, immunities that we would have for performing these duties. Um, and I don't see our, our health department engaging in any sort of gross negligence in, in, in something like this. So I think, um, I actually, I, 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 just, actually I think it's the medical center because when I, yeah. I, I checked on this with our health department, apparently we pay a flat fee now for the medical center providing some of these wellness educational type things. Well, well there's we a could, there, there, We could add additional, I think Woodridge has like five children that would qualify and we could add them at no cost to us and it would help Ridgewood. So I, I would Ridge rather. So I'm happy to see that. I just was concerned, you know, to that one little piece of language, whenever it seems like we're taking risk, I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, look, you know, I, I'm not going to say, I, 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 I think the risk is, is, is minimal. Look, anytime you take on an activity, you know, we can get sued for it. I mean, uh, that's the, the nature of, uh, of government these days. Um, it, it seems to me, out of all, all the, all, all, you know, uh, out of all the risks that uh, that are out there, this seems to be, you know, a, a fairly minimal one. But again, it's not non-existent, and so you, you know, you have to say to yourself, is 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 it something you're comfortable in doing? If it's not, you know, then we can, uh, you know, we can address that issue. But again, this is a short term. I mean, this is really for the next three months. I can't imagine it's a large group of people out of I Woodridge. Gonna, I think it's going to continue. But, but if, it, if it does continue, you know, we may have to go back and address that issue. If this is going to be a longer term deal that we have with Woodridge about, um, you know, how we handle that. And by the way, we're both in the same GIF. So if there were to be something, I mean, essentially at the end of the day, doesn't matter who's paying. everybody collectively would be, you know, after you, you, you go through a self-insured retainer, everybody collectively would be paying in the GIF anyway. So as long um, as you're just aware and it's okay. Th that's right. I mean, I, I that there's no, there's really minimal risk here. Uh, I, I, I think I, I can't, I can't come to you and say there is no risk. I mean, everything in life has some risk. I can say, I think it's a minimal risk. Okay. Thanks. And that's the best I can tell you. Six or five. Okay, number five is a resolution authorizing the execution of the assistance to the firefighters grant agreement between the city of Hackensack and the United States Department of Homeland Security, basically Federal Emergency Management Agency. So we have applied for a grant to the efforts of Deputy Chief Nyland. 
and the Hackensack Fire Department has received a grant award from the United States Department of Homeland Security Federal Emergency Management Agency through FY 2017 Assistance to Firefighter Grant for the replacement and upgrade of thermal imaging cameras and firefighter personnel escape systems, which is those um, repelling ropes if they get trapped in a, in a uh, high rise or a second floor, they can get out of that floor and move down. Um, whereas the firefighter grant will provide $86,182 in federal funding for the completion of the project. And whereas the city of Hackensack will provide $8,618 in municipal funding towards the completion of this grant. Any questions? I didn't think so. Um, Municipal A grant. We have, this is, I guess, the night of grants, um, through the efforts of our grant writers from Millennium Strategies, we're submitting for a Municipal A grant, Safe Streets to Transit grant, and Transit Village grant, submitting to the New Jersey DOT. Um, this would cover um, our Main Street streetscape from Barry Street to Banta for all three of these grants. So it's basically submission 2019 Department of Transportation Municipal Grant Application Execution of Grant Agreement for Main Street, Streetscape, Barry Street to Banta Place Project. So this continues our funding for the redevelopment of Main Street, which obviously helps fund the two-way conversion, which helps fund the beautification of our Main Street. So I urge the mayor and council um, when this comes up to support this because Additional funding is always a wonderful thing for us and the taxpayers. Uh, number seven is we're back to our military dog statue. And I don't mean the statue of, of, of a case number. I'm talking about a physical statue of a canine service dog. <coughs> um, for respect for our military service, um, this article... We've had some discussion about this. It will take three to four months. We need a half down payment, and the estimated cost is approximately $28,750. So before I start to place an order, um, we had some conversation about maybe we could get donations from the public. Um, but before I order or do anything, and Albert has assisted in this project and done the research, and I thank him for that is that um, I want to make sure that you folks were still on track and how would you like me to proceed? I mean, we've, we've been talking about this for a while and you know, there were some of the veterans that asked that this could be down, you know, in the park down on Hudson Street. Right. Um, I think at a minimum, maybe we should reach out, uh, John, what do you think, to Mike Melfi, who kind of is the head of the veterans board? Yes, he heads up the, uh, our little, it's not really a committee, but uh, he heads up the Veterans Day just get uh, some services feedback and Memorial Day services, so we, we can reach out to Mike. I can reach out to Mike, but uh, this 2875, uh, 28,750, is that soup to nuts, start to finish, installed, everything? A basic cause for all of the above. So you get the name of the dog, military um, unit symbol placed on the back of the dog. I have enacted people um, who would do the casting. Um, all the above demands and a great deal of time, labor, and material. I think that this is a good estimate. Um, I don't know how much there is for the installation of this, but um, if it required a footing or something, I'm sure our DPW could take care of that. So, um, but we'll see. Okay. Um, but I don't have a complete uh, understanding. Albert, do you have any? Aside from the quote that I had provided from Robert Carpenter, I don't. Okay. That's enough. There's another court I assume. Okay. We'll just make sure that the rest of the veterans organization is still on target. This is something they want and they feel it's appropriate. And I'll get some feedback from the mayor. Obviously, this is a 2019 project. Mm -hmm. And obviously, we can have some conversation and see if there's anybody from the... Um, private sector that would like to make a respectful donation to our veterans. Uh, number eight is the hooray. The parking, um, 
we've spent quite a little time on the um, proposed parking ordinance. Mr. Kleiman, um, Bill Daly, Albert Dibb, we've um, had a concerted effort to finally get this and um, I've been told that we now have all the appropriate language in. So, um, so the issue is availability. Monthly parking permit holders shall have an exclusive use of all street parking lots between the hours of 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. On, Wednesday, on weekdays and shall not be required to pay any additional cost for the use of such lots until 6 p.m. on weekdays or to use such lots at any time on Saturday. Hour, hourly transient parking by non-permitted holders shall also be permitted in such lots starting at 2 p.m. on weekdays and all days on Saturday and all day on Saturday. A permit does not guarantee that a parking spot will be available. And the, the other amended thing was the initial cost for new, de new decals was 50. That was reduced to $15. I think, though, as far as the, the time and the way it's going to work is exactly the same. It's just that the wording was better. Correct. I, I think the other like could have been a little confusing or misinterpreted. So I think now it's very, very clear. And, and But really, that's exactly what we've been talking about all along, which was at 2 o'clock if a, a monthly spot is available and empty, uh, an, another individual that doesn't have a monthly spot could come in and pay the meter and use it, right? <laughs> like I said, we're trying to bring clarity to all of these ordinances and update them through the effort of uh, Mr. Kleiman and the rest because some of these led to some back and forth and it wasn't clear, so then it became interpretation. Um, next is the Discussion of the 2019 recycling calendar. You folks were given um, a small packet of um, some options and a design one. There are three to choose from as far as the front cover layout for 2019. And we'd like you, one obviously by majority, to choose one and also make sure that you approve of the language or um, uh, comments made on the front of the calendar and then the the, the second thing is that um, we'd like to use the same verbiage for it but basically we just need some input from you folks um, this this work has been done by Frank Borelli um, who I think has really done a nice job and I think he provides some options and it's clearly up to the mayor and council I think it looks pretty good the um I would definitely, you know, um, on number two, I would extend it to the one week after Labor Day. I don't know what yeah, the council could, feels could on we, that. Can we talk about this we're, we're in general? Have that, that's, that's, I got some more here. I, I, okay. I, I think we should talk about, and because originally we, we were doing this much longer. We were starting, you know. I'm going to get to that okay. as, soon as, I, All right. as soon as I pin you folks down to make a decision on the first copy, second copy, or third copy, which one of these three you would like? You want us to vote now? Is that it? I would love to get I'm started. fine with, with number one. I like number one. Did you see them, Dave? Yeah. And show, Dave, do you have a copy? Dave? It's in the back. You want, you want to see mine? This is number one. Yeah. There we go. I number two. Steph, what would you like? Number one. Number one. I like. I just think number one is simpler. I think those two are a little busy. What do you like, Dave? Number one. Dave? Number one. Leo? Number two. Uh, okay. It looks like it's number one wing. So it looks like we're with one. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that decision. Um, now we're going to talk about the recycling calendar. Leaf pickup. Will we uh, implement the pickup schedule or just the beginning and ending dates um, we request for um, to have a pickup schedule? And will we still allow leaves to be piled in the street? Or are we moving strictly to recycling bags? 
I, you know, my opinion on this on the recycling bags. I don't think, yeah. I think we should it's encourage it. Take a long it. time to train the people. I think we, should, like Kathy just said, we should encourage it, push forward, and hopefully each year it goes towards bags. But I, I don't think it's going to work, and we're just going to have piles of leaves anyway, which are not going to get picked up if there's no program for it. Okay. Um, um, as far as the schedule, um, should we list the beginning and end dates? Because to be honest with you, depending on weather or you conditions, <laughs> to say, well, we're going to be here every Tuesday um, mm -hmm. for the next three weeks would be falsehood, in my opinion, because just like this weather, we, we should be cleaning mm -hmm. storm drains, but how do you clean them when you're you know, working out of a gondola already? That's the problem. Is, is there a way to sh try to pick up the leaves at the beginning of the week? Because most homeowners do yard work on the weekends. And if it's a landscaper, they're probably taking the leaves well, the with them. Is the, the landscaping company, sometimes they blow the leaf right in the street. And they made the mound right in the street. They don't pick them up. Right. They maybe charge you for 300 to clean the backyards or whatever, but they put all the pile outside the house. Okay. If it's, as long as it's only your leaves and not anybody else's. Yes, I okay, mean, but I still, you know. I they mean, charge you for that. They charge the tenants. Right, so we're saying you can still have them in the street as long as it's just your leaves. It's not yeah. somebody else's leaves that you're putting there. So at this point, we're going to stick with a start date and an end date. We're going to encourage um, brown bagging leaves, but we're not going to forbid leaf pickup if they place them in the street. I think you should make them. I mean, how many people picked up bags last year? You ever... Hmm? I don't have an exact number, but we I will try to on. monitor that and see, and then do it again this year and see if more people are using bags and see, you know, which direction it's going. I mean, I hate them on the street because they end up in the sewers, but, uh, you know, I think scheduling has a lot to do with that as well, by you know, making sure we get them up as quick as possible. But, you know, when it's full-blown leaf season, you, know, you, you take a pile away today, there's another pile there the next Absolutely. day. Absolutely. Okay. When does it generally start? When do we usually start? Like October? End of October. I think it's October. October. I'll, I'll find that out and once we put this up, you'll see it in draft anyway. Uh, like October to December maybe? Like is that? Something close to that. I think the, like the first week of December we okay. ended it last year. And but I'm going to put a leaf right in the sidewalk and then on a big truck with a vacuum, pick them up. Right. Second. In all the houses. Wow. Second topic, um, twice a week garbage pickup, beginning Memorial Day and ending Labor Day. There was a question whether or not to extend one week after Labor Day due to the warm weather and holidays and all of the party that has to be cleaned up after Labor Day for people, um, I'm sorry, Memorial Day and ending Labor Day from parties and stuff. So. I mean, originally we were doing this until these started. We were doing it the whole month of September and the whole month of May. I guess my question is, why can't we do that? Yeah. Air Council can say that we're no, going to do this No, but I mean, is there some September? reason, like, it, are they doing some other work that they can't continue to do twice I, a week? Listen, your wish is my command. No, no, I, I'm just trying I to that, understand. But I, I, don't, like, I know once they start doing leaves, and that's a problem, and that's why it has to stop. Well, I but. think that, that obviously the two-day-a-week pickup has a, a component that affects um, leaf pickup. So if we extend to the end of September, um, we can then jump to leaf pickup, but that's that's a mayor and council decision. I, I think the Memorial Day date is yeah. fine, but I, I would try to keep it into September. Okay, so works. you're good till September 31st? Yep. Yes. There was saying Memorial Day weekend to the end of September. Right. Okay, next on the calendar is garbage and rubbish calendar. Do we want to keep the color-coded calendar and map or use an insert? This is much easier for residents to read. When we put all of these events on the calendar and you have a copy of this, it fills all those little calendars. So what we've presented to you folks is access um, 219 board meeting schedules and it just lists the day of the week and the date for the meeting and where it's held i think that it makes it much cleaner because when you start to put all these calendars you're like well what is this and and now that we have that other calendar that fills um 
all the different types of boards. When you look at January, for the example of 2019, your book, you know, it, it lists um, New Year's Day, um, which is a Tuesday, Wednesday, recreation board meeting, 645, Xmas tree pickups, lists the, the zones, the dates, rate, um, rent stabilization board meetings, cow meetings. It fills up that calendar rather quickly. So I think just listing all the boards and their dates when they're proposed to meet. Like so, this, this page here? Yes, ma'am. I think it kind of fills the void. And then we pass down to the calendar that fills that and then our sanitation and recycling would stay in the block calendar with the with the different colors for to identify the routes so residents know when they get they're going to get their pickups but we're trying to get as much of this information together as uh, publicly asked we asked from input from the public and for the record we didn't get anything from the public, so I'm just trying to get as much covered because, unfortunately, there's like, like some... When the, when the twice a week pickups start, I, the colors don't work anymore. Well, we'll, we'll sort that out. But like, I'm maybe just, you want to put a, you know, a slash or something. It. Because, like, like, for example, I know, like, mine, I'm on Thursday when we're once, and then once a week, and then I go to Tuesday and Friday. So, like, they're totally different days. Right. So it's always a little bit confusing on our block. Right? Well, People well, saying, is this the right day until they get used to it? So maybe just, just I'm fine with the colors as long as when it's the twice a week we have, like is this, if I look at this now, it's wrong. Right. What I'm trying to do is just get the style of right. how this is. I understand. Is, okay. And then we're going to input the exact information so we have this correct. And that's, but I'm just trying to get some kind of format this mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. now this calendar is going to be very expansive compared to previous years which was part of the comment. So. so we didn't have this one? No, we wouldn't have that. Oh. We'll just have, it's proposing, it's just having this, this page where it lists them all, rather than cluttering the whole thing up. You would be oh, that better. Especially when there's multiple things on one night, you're saying it would be very busy, which right. probably, he's probably right. And I just make sure we have some type of disclaimer that check the web, always check the website because right. things happen and we have to right. change well, the there's dates. there's a disclaimer on top. That's Is there? Yeah, this the calendar was to proposed. Change. Oh, all right. Yeah. I, 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 I identified. At the time that it was originated, because obviously oh, subject to change. But maybe you just add to that. Always check the hackensack.org. You know, something like that, because that's when we do change one. There's usually a note. You know, we try to, and we should always have a notice right there on the home page that says, you know, meeting canceled or meeting date changed. They would see it right. Away. And the last issue is the board meeting dates. Instead of putting them in boxes, we put them in the listed form that you folks have already seen. Yeah. Now, is it all boards or just the boards you have on this page? No, the, 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 Looks like everything. there's a city board and they have dates. We're going to try to list all, all of them. Up. So, board of residents planning. have a board of ed. Zoning, rec, it, stigma free. If it involves the city in one, one. So, group like you'd or, have condo board, library board, you'd have all those things. All of them. Okay. Yeah. And wasn't the uh, stigma free merging with the municipal lines? But didn't I hear that? Correct. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Right. So that will become we'll, one. We'll get don't we? Oh wait. Don't we need to do an ordinance for that, Steve? If they're going to merge the two boards? Yeah, I, I would think so, right? I mean, if we it's have a member of the stigma-free committee here, the board, it is, like is, come I, I'd have to look in the city code to see, you know, what exactly it says with respect to those two boards. They if, both have their own ordinance. As of right now, they both have their own ordinance. Yeah, I mean, if that's the case, then I think that would make good sense to do. Mayor, if the, if the decision is to proceed in that manner. Yes, absolutely. Stigma free. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I just explained what happened. Stigma free has had trouble getting people here. So we have become a committee of the Municip Municipal Alliance, which is how most other towns do it. We will still have quarterly meetings, stigma free which are on the website, okay. our meetings. And, but we can be, attend the Municipal Alliance meetings also, okay. which are during the day. But, you know, so there are quarterly meetings for Stigma Free. It still does exist, but we're a committee of the Municipal Alliance. And you'll confirm those with us when I send you an email to make sure we have the dates right. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, if it if it is in the ordinance, I mean, we should clean it up in in legislation. And I would suggest, 
you know, if I were to draft something to send it to you or to whoever you guys deem appropriate Dawn. to make sure I'm not missing something. Uh, Sue or Dawn, actually. Yes. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And that, then. added to the list, um, the short notice, unfortunately, we only got it um, today, is a new program, um, put the brakes on fatalities um, for October 2018. So this is a um, resolution that's coming out to all chiefs of police from the New Jersey Division of Highway Safety that's going to declare that October 10th um, is the date that we're going to put the brakes on fatalities day. And the goal is not to have any fatalities on October 10th. Um, Director, do you have any comments or anything that you want to say? It'll be something that um, it'll be on our message. Thank you, Jerry. So in this packet um, comes with a sample proclamation. It comes with a um, press release, and it also comes with a um, uh, press release and um, an explanation for the public for news immediate release. So our next council meeting isn't the 16th. So I'm going to ask you folks to support this resolution tonight so we can be proactive, be prepared, get this information out, um, add this so we can do this before the October 10th and move forward. And that would complete the city manager's report. Very good. Dad, I need a motion to open to the public, please. Offer. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody who'd like to speak, please come forward, give your name and address to the clerk, and you will have three minutes. Thank you. Richard Salk and Hackersack, just a question. The, um, the island, uh, I thought I heard you say whatever's going to be built there is 10 feet. Just curious, what, what, is, being, what is 10 feet high in the There is. Plant? There is a um, spiral that um, comes up, I'll, I'll show it to you, um, that comes up, that raises up 10 feet with the location and um, street numbering there. And they're going to plant some trees and some bushes, uh, yeah. and it's, um, it appears okay. to be nice. So. No, no, I'm sure. I'm just curious. All right. All right. Thank you. This is the corner of Essex and Maine. No, no I understand where okay. it is. It's been, she said 10 feet. One what those could be ten feet. And I accept that it's not gonna obstruct traffic actually. Just curious. You know why he wanted that you know the story behind that? You know that. Because they've never sold to him. Yes. <laughs> you wanted to why you know file was salt. So this is the the island and this is this triangle piece. That's, that's very nice. Okay. Thank you. Next please. <laughs> Uh, John Evans, Lincoln Street. Uh, included in the in this evening's uh, docket is a resolution appointing the city's auditor D Maria and D Maria LLP. In the docket, this appointment is clubbed with 22 professional service appointments and other matters, as one motion of routine items, which, to an outsider, appears much too casual given the audit opinion and results represent a crucial attestation of the city's good financial standing before state government overseers, rating agencies, and bondholders. Not to mention before taxpayers who rely on the annual audit to confirm revenues and expenses are properly accounted for, prudent reserves and liquidity are maintained, appropriate internal controls are in place, and that state and federal financial re requirements of municipalities are adhered to. It is my uh, contention that the council should receive and review due diligence supporting the selection, even as a reappointment of the city's auditor. 
I also notice <clears throat> that the reappointment represents the sixth consecutive annual assignment for Di Maria and Di Maria. In some circumstances, it is considered best practice to rotate audit firms or alternatively audit leads within the same firm every five years. Audit independence is the main goal of rotation. While audit firm rotation can be disruptive and costly, lead auditor rotation would also not be considered effective or practical in this situation since Di Maria and Di Maria is a small accounting firm. In my opinion, however, as a result, the council needs to carefully and explicitly consider the risks of not rotating the city's audit firm. I raise these points as process issue only. I found no derogatory information about the <clears throat> firm in the public domain. Except for some delay in publishing audit results, I considered the 2016 report thorough and informative regarding the city's financial health, which in combination with S&P's AA rating is sterling, one notch below the US sovereign rating, I should add. And now uh, for something completely different, uh, please, uh, could I ask the um, <clears throat> city manager to uh, summarize what action has been taken on the ADA issues at the police station, which were raised by a member of the public at the 821-2018. Thank you. You may address that, sir. Okay. Um, Mr. Eddie Gromek um, brought the issues and concerns that he has. We are addressing them, obviously, individually, because the comments that he makes, whether it's ADA bathrooms or curbs or street parking, there's a time that it takes to do the due diligence to figure this out. One of the things that was brought to my attention is that the stall length of parking spots on our streets did not meet current standards. When they were initially put in, the standards were different. They've changed through the years. So we now currently have the Traffic Bureau out remeasuring these to make sure that we're fully in compliance. We are putting together a 2019 capital improvement budget which will address the concerns of the entrance to the police station, the rise, um, the bathroom in the court, these conditions. Um, candidly, these conditions have existed prior to my service. Unfortunately, they are capital improvements and there is a cost associated. Just to make a bathroom ADA compliant is not a cheap venture for a small. So we're trying to manage our things, but I do understand Mr. Gromek's comment that um, all residents are entitled to the same consideration and respect. And obviously he wants to live an independent life. So that means without hindrance or any added hindrance because of his condition. And I understand it completely. And I think he understands my comment that, I hate to use the term, Rome wasn't built in a day, but I'm trying to address these issues. But we are working on them, sir. And I don't disregard them anything. The other thing I want to say about our, um, you made the comment about our auditor. I've only been here, it'll be two years October 1st. But I have to tell you that um, Frank Di Maria has done an outstanding job. And when the city had some issues with tax appeals and stuff between the efforts of Jim Magan and, um, Mr. Di Maria, uh, they were able to put the city back on track financially. Um, I have we review these audit comments and the and work with the auditors on a regular basis. I have found nothing in my thing, and obviously, um, it's hard to walk away from a good order that serves the community well. Obviously, that's up to a mayor and council decision, but so far, I have no issue. Thank you. And, and, and if I may just add, um, you know, to select an auditor, the city did um, conduct what is known as a fair and open process. Um, it was publicly advertised. Um, anyone could apply. And, and, and quite frankly, I think DeMaria and DeMaria was the only responsive bidder exactly. to um, the auditor position. So, um, you know, just, just to and, – and, and when those responses are received, they are reviewed to make sure that, that the appropriate documentation is there, that the responses contain the information that were requested. So, you know, there, there was a, a process. It was an administrative process, but uh, before Dee Marie or any other professional service, including attorneys or engineers, are appointed by the city council, you know, they are reviewed by the appropriate professionals uh, to get to that point with a recommendation to the council to appoint that uh, entity. Thank you. And if I may add, as a member of the finance committee, 
Um, and just as, as to, to repeat a little bit of what the city manager said, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. Um, five years ago, when De Maria started with us, uh, there were many, many things that needed to be corrected in the city. And you can't do everything all at once. But some of the things that he's done as far as short-term, long-term planning, things that had never been put in place here from a financial perspective, he has been instituting and continues to do so. You know, in each and every year, we look at different ways that we can upgrade and improve and control and manage the finances of the city. And I think that it was shown in the, uh, in, in the rating that was increased just this past year. So, um, you know, he's, he's a pleasure to work with, and he brings true rigor and discipline, I think, to the finance department here in the city. And I'll just add, you know, best practices are, are there for a reason, but best practices are kind of like in a perfect world scenario. Uh, Hack and sex finances weren't in that perfect world. Um, we had some serious issues, and that's uh, one of the reasons why we're glad to have uh, Frank D. Maria as our auditor. But uh, I fully understand um, you know, the, the reason for best practices and why they want that. And uh, once the city is financially back on its feet, uh, and, and like our city attorney said, nobody, nobody else applied for the position. So they know, they probably know what a great bang up job he's doing, so. Yeah. Uh, as a member of the financial committee, um, I, found, I found from a really good auditor and in order to change something that is working really good for the city. So I am really happy with him. Anybody else from the public have a comment? Please give your name and address to the clerk, please. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. <coughs> My name is uh, Joseph. <coughs> excuse me, Joseph Russo from the law firm of Usher, Kiad Usher and Russo, 433 Hackensack Avenue here in Hackensack. <clears throat> and with me is my client, uh, Spiros Musicatis, who is the owner of Donnelly and Associates, the owner of the property known as Rudy's Restaurant. Um, just here tonight to just express our concern of what's been going on the last three years, uh, and specifically with regard to the resolution that is on the agenda regarding the condemnation of, of Mr. Uh, Musicatis' property and the other three properties. Um, unfortunately, uh, Mr. Muscat is, is between a rock and a hard place. That one of the major concerns that an attorney has when you enter into these redevelopment contracts is that there's going to be a lot of work uh, to have the property deemed in need of redevelopment. Then there's another process to have the redeveloper designated, and all of that was done. And Mr. Muzikadis, we did everything we were supposed to do under the contract. And the biggest fear is that when all of that work is done, we're left holding the bag because they refuse to go ahead with the contract. Now, whether or not there's a breach or not, that's not for me to say at this point. But the problem is, is he's between a rock and a hard place because we have nowhere to go. We, we, you know, I, I, as, as most of you are aware, uh, we had a purchaser we wanted to put the Federal Credit Union, wanted to put the bank there. And we understand that that's not what you want. What you want is the 120 units uh, as originally approved uh, for, for, the, for this property, which was deemed in need of redevelopment. But I'm here tonight to just express that something's got to happen. Uh, we entered into this contract in February of 2015. And you know, it took them a while to get going, and every time they wanted an extension, we gave them an extension, another extension, another extension, and then almost three years to the date, in February of 2018, Prism throws up their hands and says, we're not going to go through with the contract anymore. So what do we do? So I'm really asking you for like one minute just to view this situation through Spiros' eyes. What do we do? You know, we... we we, we, we could, we have, uh, I've met with two other developers in this town. Um, one of them is JMF, I think you're aware of, and the other one is Shergo. And they are willing to enter into a contract to, you know, redevelop, you know, Spiros's property and I think the Katz's property. And I'm assuming we could always make a deal with the city of Hackensack as to that property. You know, the... The fly in the ointment here is the Chinese restaurant, as to whether or not there's contamination there. And I understand that's the premise for this particular resolution. But if 
Prism is not going to go through with it, you know, open your eyes, please, and just maybe give the opportunity for, for Spiros to uh, make a deal with someone else who can possibly, you know, bring this football across the goal line. All right. And that's all we want. Thank you, Mr. Russo. Um, Albert, do you have any? Do you want to weigh in on this at all? Yeah. Albert is our... And, and, I, and, and, and I would just caution to, to limit it. We don't have redevelopment counsel here, and we right. have counsel for the uh, the attorney. So I would ask that Albert keep his remarks brief. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mayor, Council, and, and Steve. I, I understand your, your concerns, and without getting too much into particulars, and just for the public's background, we're talking about an area that the city had declared an area in need of redevelopment, which is roughly defined as the city-owned property, which is now being used as the building department, 410 Railroad Avenue, in addition to properties that front Anderson Street, not including the pizzeria on the corner near the railroad tracks, but Rudy's Restaurant, down to the Chinese restaurant on Anderson Street. That redevelopment plan was approved by the mayor and council um, the it was done initially with non condemnation. There was no eminent do domain contemplated, and Prism was a developer who was the designated redeveloper for the site. And over the last, I want to say, two years, eighteen months, two years, there has been an attempt to acquire all of the necessary parcels in order to move the redevelopment forward in in a way that's in accordance with the established plan, which calls for something between 120 and 160 residential units would be, which would be having that site realize its full potential and being a huge step forward towards revitalizing Anderson Street, which is fairly depressed. I know that from personal experience, having lived three short blocks from Anderson Street. The resolution that's on tonight is a resolution that effectively changes the designation from non-condemnation to condemnation, which would allow the city ultimately to acquire access to any properties that are questionable in terms of contamination. And there have been some preliminary reports that suggest that at least one of the properties in the designated area quite possibly has a considerable amount of contamination, but unless and until the city gets access and understands what's happening there, it's very difficult for any redeveloper to move this project forward. And instead, what you will get are attempts to do something piece, piecemeal, uh, very short of what the city's stated goals and objectives are for this property. So I view this resolution as a way to move forward and a way to finally understand what the lay of the land is and to give developers some options with respect to how this site can be developed in a way that's consistent with the city's goals and objectives. Thank you, Albert. Steve, did you want to weigh in at all on anything? No, no. Yeah. I made my comment, so I don't well, really have anything more and, and Steve brought up the point, you know, he's not our redevelopment attorney, nor is Albert, but what we will do tomorrow is reach out to Brian Nelson, who's our redevelopment attorney, and, and see, you know, what course should be taken here and take recommendations from council. Yeah, and I'm just going to conclude with the point is it's, it's, a, it's a time element. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, it's been three years since, over three and a half years since we signed the contract uh, and six months since we've heard from PRISM. So, you know, we just need some closure. Uh, right. And, and if PRISM is not going to come to bat and, and do this, and maybe be, uh, what Mr. Dip just said, if the facts are that there may be issues with this property, then I'm asking you to maybe respectfully request that you reconsider and maybe, you know, uh, delete that particular property from the overall redevelopment and we can go ahead and develop all three, the other, you know, these two lots that are, we know we can get under contract plus the city of Hackensack building. I would, and that's not a bad idea, but that, that determination couldn't we couldn't come to that determination until after we got in and evaluated the property right. and uh, you know see what's there because we don't know and uh, at that point we would make a decision on on what the city wanted to do there to move forward. But all right, whatever you can do to help no, steer us out would would be tremendously. We'll be on the phone with our attorney tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Regina DePasco, Parker Avenue. Um, yeah, let's help Rudy's out. Rudy's has been a, a good 
um, business in our town. Been a long time. My dad used to go there all the time from Paramus. Mm -hmm. He would come through these. Um, that Main Street, Essex corner, I did, I was down there a couple of times this week. I, and it looks really bad right now, so I think anything will be an improvement. But on the other side, Hudson to Main, there's no yield. People coming from Hudson onto Main Street, because I made the left from Essex onto Main, and I needed to go right onto Court Street, and it was almost, well, unless the person just didn't yield, but when I came by around another time, I did not see a yield sign. It would be logical that right turn have a yield when, you know, People are making a left there, and nine out of ten are going down Court Street from there. Um, just personal experience. Um, I didn't hear you mention yard waste on uh, the calendar. I do recall that one of the tags I got said yard waste pickup was the same night as a uh, garbage pickup. Um, I can't. I couldn't find the tag. We put out yard waste. My garbage pickup was today, but my yard waste wasn't picked up. So. Uh, but I couldn't find it anywhere. I couldn't find it on a calendar. You know, grass clippings, you trim the, the, the hedges, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, the yard waste was always with the garbage day. It was, uh, yeah, well, mine didn't get picked up today. So I was wondering if I was wrong, but I thought that's what it was. It usually is with the, the same. But when garbage switched, it, it, we're all confused. Everybody is confused. Everybody. The yard and, waste guys, and, Regina, they came really early this morning. My, oh, my yard waste was out yesterday. Oh, because they came really early this morning because the dog was barking really uh -huh. early this morning. Oh, yeah. I was like, what are you I, barking at 6 o'clock? I heard them this morning, but when I came home at 3.30, the yard waste was still there. Because oh, they were so, like really early this yeah. morning. <laughs> yeah, earlier than usual. You're, you're right. Um, but, okay, as far as the starting date, for our neighborhood, starting it on Memorial Day is confusing because ours is usually Monday. Um, wait a minute. Ours is usually Tuesday. See, I'm confused. <laughs> and Monday being a holiday, most of the people in my neighborhood don't know that our sanitation works on a holiday. So they don't know to put it out that day. And then it just, it, it snowballs. It snowballs. And even after Labor Day, Labor Day, okay, did we, were we supposed to put it out on Labor Day? Or go back to Tuesday that week? You know, it was confusing. I, I had garbage be, cans out in my neighborhood. There should be a note that if they're working holidays, in fact, your day is your day, whether it's a holiday or not, and there should be a note on the calendar. But, yeah, we, yeah, we do, in my time. neighborhood, we don't usually have Monday. So right. switching us to a Monday, usually to, only, on the beginning of the very start it probably only affects Mondays and or, I mean, they don't pick up on Christmas. There's certain holidays. Yeah, there's, so, there's very on. few holidays. The only two that we exclude is Christmas, Christmas and Thanksgiving. And I don't think they're there on Thanksgiving either. I think it's just the presidential holidays, uh, the sure. Monday holidays. They yeah, work. the Monday they work, and when you're not used to it, in Labor then, Day, Memorial my Day, my presidential goal holidays. is to bring clarity to this and end this confusion. Well, good I luck get, with that well, because it's. <laughs> I get beat up every year, and I'm trying to end the beatings if I can. Uh, oh. But it, we're we're all confused. We're everybody yes, is confused. Thank you. Thank you. But where will my yard waste be picked up? Uh, well, uh, my my thought process is they started out on yard waste and then got into flood mitigation because of the rain. So I think. Did you notice if other people's yard waste was picked up on your block yeah. by Not chance? Puts it out every week. I don't know. So I. I Debbie's about what five six blocks from me. I don't know. Right. Did you have yard waste out? There were people that had it out and it was picked up, but like I said, they were extremely early this morning. Yeah, before the monsoons. Yeah. But mine was out last night, so. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Next, please. All right. Good evening, everybody. My name is Randy Glover. I'm a resident of Hackensack. Uh, I'm the creator and executive producer of the Main Street Live Concert Series held at Atlantic Street Park. This summer was our third year producing the event. It is the second year that the city of Hackensack participated as a co-producer. I'd like to thank the city of Hackensack and the Cultural Arts Department. This summer, the concert series handed out $4,000 in scholarships to students who reside in Hackensack, along with the first special needs scholarship in conjunction with freeholder David L. Gans. Um, uh, okay. Since the series has begun, we have given out 
approximately $7,000 in scholarship money. We have also touched all cultures and lifestyles of Hackensack. We have produced the first LGBTQ event in Hackensack, Indian Night, Caribbean Night, Hometown Heroes Night, and Hometown Celebrities Night here in our city. This year saw us, saw us adding Dr. Bob Lee of top five Arbitron ranked urban radio station 107.5 WBLS as our host. Each concert event has Atlantic Street Park bursting at its seams. We look forward to continued success of the concert series as our city grows and welcomes all new residents to Hackensack. Thank you again, City Council, for your partnership. Thank you, Randy. Appreciate it. Next, please. My name is Corinne Whitmire. I live at 190 Berry Street. And I've uh, been here a few times before, with no disrespect at all to this place or to the people, but I think or feel that this is the bipolar podium for those that don't have money, you know, the ones that are in power or running things. So, um, so I hate myself for being here. Um, I tried holding my tongue and I feel like some kind of voodoo doll that's been brought here um, without my own will or possess, let's put it that way. Um, I've been in a, um, so I'm gonna, now I'm gonna try to speak quickly. So, okay, so uh, I've been in a program with Care Plus I've been here since 2016. Um, there's a gentleman named Mike Capone who's trying to get me a job. Um, prior to this, I was actually with some other group that's connected to Care Plus, but they say that the office is divided, but it's really not. And um, so I heard, what was his name, Servo or whatever his name, you know, Rant and Raven, of course. And uh, I'm an East Sales program like him. And, you know, I'm just a nutcase like everyone else. Like she says, I guess I, I got to fall into that gap. Um, today I walked home and it was about two and a half feet of water before I can even enter my place. There's always water near the gutter. I look at the news and they said, oh, New Jersey had a death of some kind of virus or something, West Nile. Um, my landlord, I complain about mailboxes. They can't afford to buy them. My mail was wet the other day. Um, I'm having a lot of trouble living there. It really is kind of like at that point. And, uh, you know, I don't even know if I want to say anymore, actually, but to continue, so uh, prior to living in here, I lived on 40 Reed Avenue at Passaic Park, um, Jewish his, his, his civic neighborhood. My mother, she actually purchased a house and then she sold. Been bipolar for a while. Hearing a voice about the mafia, you know, stuff like that. been to the police station, of course, here, and I complained about, we don't want to hear it. Actually, I got hung up on. So I'm a statistic at this point, being African-American, you know, what we talked about in the bathroom, the guy jumping on top of the, uh, and I, I did hear, find out what that was called, actually. Actually, I looked up something, they, they had something in Britain where now uh, they're conforming in a way that the religion is in the you know, people, they go up and they work and they don't want to even get paid. They just want to kind of slam the metal down or whatever and do whatever they want with people. So, you know, all my time. So, thank so you much. for your comments. Anyone else from the public like to speak? Motion to close to the public? Offer. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Von Rudenberg? Aye. Deputy Mayor Constantino? Aye. Deputy Mayor Sims? Aye. Councilmember Battaglia? Aye. Mayor LaBrosse? Aye. The motion to go into closed session? Awesome. Second. Councilmember Von Rudenberg? Aye. Deputy Mayor Constantino? Aye. Deputy Mayor Sims? Aye. Councilmember Battaglia? Aye. Mayor LaBrosse? Aye. Whereas the Mayor and Council of the City of Hackensack deem it necessary to discuss certain actions under Section 7B7 and 7B8 
of the Oakland Public Meeting Act which pertains to matters falling within attorney-client privilege, ongoing litigation, and personnel matters concerning the employment of a current or prospective public employee. Third, the Mayor and Council of the City of Hackensack is of the opinion that such circumstances may presently exist. And whereas the Mayor and Council wishes to discuss the following issues, personnel matters, ongoing litigation, matters involving attorney-client privilege, matters involving the purchase, lease, or acquisition of real property, any pending or anticipated litigation or contract negotiations. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Mayor and Council of the City of Hackensack deem it necessary to exclude the public from this discussion. The outcome of the discussion will be disclosed within 90 days or at such time and interest of the city do not require confidentiality. I'm, I'm sure we'll mention the, the case recently filed by Mr. Salk and um, other cases may come up and I will advise publicly if they do. Thank you. Is everybody at 8 o'clock? Good evening, everybody. Madam Clerk? Uh, we need... Need a motion to uh, come out of closed session, please? But before that... Yeah, yeah just, just uh, we back on? Yes? Yeah. Okay. Um, just to note for the record, in addition to the case I mentioned earlier, there was a discussion about litigation involving uh, Charles Zisa and litigation involving um, the case of Parham versus Hackensack, also discussed as part of uh, the attorney's report. Thank you. Okay, so now we need a motion to adjourn the executive session. Need a motion to, to adjourn the executive session? Offer. All in favor? Aye. 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 None opposed? I need a motion to close the uh, Council of the Whole meeting? Offer. All in favor? Aye. 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 None opposed? 